feel those unresolved issues. What, you don't have to disrupt them to me, but whatever you're referring to. Your gift is developed by applying them to those issues. Those issues are there for you to develop your gift with. You can't develop, you can't develop your third stage gift the way you develop, the, the obstacle is the way. Literally. The thing you're talking about as possibly bypassing is the point. <laughs> like, so you want to, pr- one way of saying that, this is never exact, is the consciousness in your body was born to go through that. That the aspect, you know, consciousness is coming through each of our bodies to grow in different ways. Just look around, we all have different stories, different ways of growing. So consciousness is coming through your body to experience what you were referring to as your stuff. And I have, everyone has it. So you now must, and sooner or later, I say sooner, (laughs) um, apply consciousness right to that stuff. Now, that is first stage. So these are stages. So you have to take care of yourself. You have to apply enough to your own internal stuff before you could even notice another person's there. Quite literally, like if I'm in so much pain, like let's say I have horrible indigestion or I'm sick, I have the flu, I can't, I'm not going to be able to be in a second stage moment. I have to take care of myself, get healthy enough to be in the second stage. So there's no, if you have to spend a year, 10 years, 10 lifetimes applying consciousness to those issues, that's the best practice you could do. You can't do better practice. You can't, better practice doesn't mean not dealing, you know, going into some imaginary third stage gift. That's your third stage gift. Your third stage gift is what you're developing. You know, the universe is giving you the perfect cultivation of your third stage gift. And every moment you refuse this moment, like, I don't want to deal with that. I want to go into the third. That's a bypassing of practice. And every moment you stay with the moment as it is, you can still change the content of the moment, but you stay with whatever the content is. Oh, like the other day, I very freely said, I want to fuck her, fuck her, fuck her, kill him, kill him. I could easily say that because I've watched myself do that. I don't have any resistance to that. I could feel it in everybody. So you have to stay with those. Those thoughts coming up in you, you go, yeah, I want to fuck that person. I want to kill. You don't go, oh, I wish I didn't feel these things. Or how could I do yoga so I don't feel those things? Or if I didn't feel those things, my practice would be pure. Absolutely not. Your practice is to apply consciousness to that. And then your gift, what you're calling your third stage gift, that's how it develops. That's the byproduct of applying consciousness to your moment-to-moment experience is your gift. So let me give you a taste of third stage practice. But so you would go, isn't this Peter? Is that what you said? It doesn't matter. So you go something like, Peter's an asshole. You know, you look at him and you feel whatever you felt. Peter's an asshole. So that comes up in you. Third stage practice is Peter's an asshole. How interesting. Maybe you do it over and over. Peter's an asshole. That feels so cool. Peter's a fucking asshole. I, where's that coming from? Like, like I would explore it. I would feel it. Maybe if he was a friend, I'd share it. I go, look, man, I don't know where this is coming from. I feel like you're an asshole. And if he's a friend, he'd probably go, hey, man, I've been wanting to tell you. I feel like an asshole. Let's talk about it. I don't know. You know, like, I don't know. I would trust it, in other words. Like, most of the artifacts... Okay, let me back up for a second here. All of us have a lot of patterns in us that are just for these repetitive patterns. Uh, nobody loves me, I'm not going to succeed, uh, all that stuff. So everybody has those. You also have spontaneous responses to people. So you look at this guy and you feel he's an asshole. Now, some of that may indeed be your old patterns, like your father did something to you and all men are assholes, and you look at him and it's like, he's an asshole. But I'm, so what I've learned is that if I do the process that I just described, like stay with that, Peter's an asshole, Peter's an asshole. If I do that over and over, like stay with it and really feel it, I could begin to discriminate my old father stuff, let's say, which has a crusty feeling, I don't know, to, you know, I don't know why I feel he's an asshole, but every fucking time I look at him, I feel this guy's an asshole. And that I have learned to trust, and that has become the basis of my entire career. (laughs) So... I now look at him or anyone and I trust entirely because I've realized 
the, I trust the feminine. What that is is your feminine responding to him. That's what women have to learn to trust. They have to look at him and go, fucking asshole. That's what she needs to learn specifically. <laughs> so seriously, right? I mean, it's obvious. So d- the wisdom part of you will not tolerate less than the third stage in a man you love. And if you love him, even as a practitioner, you part the part of him that's practicing less than he can, you will fuck you. And if and if you're both in the third stage practice, that's a healthy thing to express. So a full expression might be, look, man, some of this is my own shit, some of it might be something going on, but I think you're a fucking asshole. And every time I look at you, I think you're an asshole. Do you want a beer, man? I don't know. So you just express that and some of it, if none of it is true, he'll just go, cool, man. But if some of it's true, he'll go, no way, no way. I don't know. What do you mean? Like, you'll catch something and you'll go, no, let's have a beer. No, you, you can't come to me and say that and have a beer. What's going on? So now you've touched something that's in him. Um, so maybe you do have childhood things, but you actually have some wisdom. So I'm going to say it's both. I'm going to say you probably have some father asshole stuff left, but there's probably shit going on in him that you're sensitive to that you could really serve him from, from your wisdom heart. His, his woman could serve him. Everyone can serve him if they just let him know their feeling of him being an asshole in the moment of him being an asshole. If he chooses to receive that, that's a third stage choice and not everyone chooses that. It's a big deal to have people reflect that to you. It's, it takes a lot. Because I think there's some wisdom in there is all I was saying. What I do is when things come up and interfere either in my functional life or my consciousness, I deal with them. So if something came up that was a father issue repeatedly, which is what happened, I deal with it. And by repeatedly, I mean more than once, basically. So if I sit down and I go over the same thought twice, that's an issue for me. And I would work on that. now. You always orient towards consciousness even when you're working on the first stage. And then you work on the first stage stuff enough so it's kind of like you could just rest in the consciousness practice. And then the thing will come up, but something will trigger it again or trigger a different one. And you go, oh, fuck more. <laughs> and you deal with that. And then as soon as it's a diminished enough that you could let, it's never diminished all the way. Now at some point, those will be diminished enough and you'll feel everyone else's as intensely as you used to feel yours. So you just walk into a room with people and you feel everyone's like, okay, I deal with that, breathe for that person, breathe for that. And then your, your lover hugs you and you, you feel all of their things. So it's a never ending thing. So the point is orient the consciousness in every moment or you just suffer. It's just never ending work. So the, the, the obstacle is the way means instead of going, I don't want to feel that, you just allow yourself to feel that. So feeling whatever you're feeling is what I call the first stage. Communicating what you're feeling is what I call the second stage. So you turn and go, when you turn away, I felt horrible inside or whatever it was. But the third stage is simply orienting to consciousness and showing him how it feels. So if his consciousness is gone, it hurts. So when his consciousness diminishes, it hurts. So your third stage response would be to spontaneously let your body show that. It could be pretty subtle. It could be just like, like a disappointment or a fr- It's what you're actually feeling. You can't fake it. You could magnify what you're feeling so he could see it, but it's whatever you're really feeling. I don't want to make it up for you. And if you're not feeling anything, he should not be with you. If every nuance of his consciousness doesn't move your energy, you're with the wrong guy. Like, don't bother even on the date. Like, sit down with him, have coffee, go, I'm done, bye. I mean, unless his consciousness is so interesting to you that you're hanging on, like every, you know, like he lifts, I don't smoke cigarettes, but he, like, he lifts his cigarettes and you're like, just, just the way he does, you know, that's what you want to feel. Um, if it's not that, he could be a friend of yours. That's all. So that's the, the obstacle in the way in this case is to love what you're feeling, to not want to change that feeling, to either tell him what, show him the expression in your face or tell him what you're feeling. That would be the practice. So instead of avoiding the feeling, you just share it, feel it, orient his consciousness. So, so again, the main practice is always to love what's happening in the moment. You could then change it. So you relax with what's happening in the moment. It's the resistant to what's happening, including your own thoughts and emotions. It's like, no, I don't want to experience it. That's the creation of psychosis and suffering. 
whatever you're experiencing is what you are meant to experience in that moment. And the most full way to live is to completely digest the experience, even if it's hell. That's what the obstacles of the way means. You experience the hell so fully, you digest it, you metabolize it. You, that's what life is. So it's that, that's what the obstacles of the way means. You, whatever's happening is the way. It's not like, ah, this is bad practice. It's like, ah, this is what I have to be with. This is what I have to love. This is what I have to be conscious with. And now this is, and now this is, and now this is. Now, you can also then add skill to that. So you could go, this is what I have to be conscious with. Let me try to rearrange it so it looks better. Now, this is what I have to be conscious of this. Let me try rearrange it so it looks better. This is what, let me build a building, and this is what I have. So you could add to it, but every moment you stay present with whatever is or what you've created. The moment something happens, like you have a feeling or a thought, and you go, no, I don't want to feel that. That's separation and suffering. Or in your partner, when your partner goes, does something, and you feel like, no, no, I don't want to feel that. That I don't want to feel it. The resistance to the experience itself is your resistance to the feminine. It's the resistance to the feminine. It's feminine oppression. So you want to just completely experience everything you're experiencing fully. Like your thoughts, your feelings. You know, Peter's an asshole. Yeah, I feel that. Peter's an <laughs> asshole. Like really, you know, he needs to experience it fully. And, you know, everyone's happier when everyone experiences everything fully. You are listening to a talk by David Data. Recorded live. Recordings of live talks and workshops are available at www.data.live. That's D-E-I-D-A dot L-I-V-E.